Good morning. You know, I woke up this morning and I was humming the Snoopy tune. So I knew today had to be commencement day. It's my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome all of you. My name is Don Latender, and I am privileged to serve as the ninth dean in the storied history of the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have only one housekeeping and announcement before we begin today's very special ceremony. I would ask all of you, please, to reach into your pants pocket or your purses and please turn off any electronic devices so that we do not interfere with the special dignity of today's occasion. If you could just take a moment to do that, that would be greatly appreciated. It is my heartfelt pleasure to offer a welcome to President Harrell and other members of the platform, College of Pharmacy faculty and staff, friends, family, guests, and most especially, the class of 2018. To each and every one of you, we extend our sincere greetings and thanks for the honor of your presence here today. Today marks the college's 132nd commencement. For those of you that might not know, we're the oldest public college of pharmacy west of the Mississippi, and only the fourth public college of pharmacy in the United States of America. Speaking on behalf of the faculty, I can assure you that the ladies and men seated here today are extremely well prepared for the challenges of healthcare in the 21st century. And, and today, we are gathered to celebrate their achievements and bid them well on their journey. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to recognize the individuals joining me this morning on the platform. Starting from my far left, your right, there first, Dr. Michael Kelly, Associate Dean for Professional Student Affairs and Professor, who will be introducing the graduates. Dr. Kelly oversees the administrative and academic functions for the Doctor of Pharmacy program. The Office of Academic Affairs is responsible for recruitment, admissions and retention, advising and counseling, curriculum oversight, financial aid and scholarships, and overall student activities. I know the students find Dr. Kelly particularly effective in this role and appreciate greatly the guidance and wisdom that he and members of his office provide. Incidentally, Professor Kelly bleeds black and gold. As evidenced by the fact that he has not one but three degrees from our institution, Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, a Master of Science in Pharmaceutical Sciences, and his PharmD degree. We are most fortunate to have him as a member of our college family. And normally, in my introductions each year, I would stop there. But this year, I have a special note to add. It is with a great deal of pride that I also share with you that Associate Dean Kelly has earned the special distinction of being named this year's Collegiate Teacher of the Year. The distinction is especially meaningful in that the selection was determined by his peers. An incredible accomplishment given the overall scope of duties and responsibilities that Associate Dean Kelly has. I know we just did this, Mike, but I'd ask you please to stand once again to, so that we can acknowledge your receipt of this very, very special award. Mike, please. <laughs> Each
Each year, the College of Pharmacy recognizes outstanding teachers selected by the students. This is done on a class-by-class -class basis. The process begins by soliciting nominations and supporting comments from each of the P1 through P3 classes. The results are used to select finalists who are asked to supply documentation describing their approach to teaching and their teaching philosophy. In addition, recognizing fully the tremendous importance clinical education and training plays in the overall education of our students, special recognition is also bestowed upon, our, upon a faculty preceptor of the year. Teaching, discovery, patient care, and servant leadership are at the heart of our existence as professors. We are incredibly fortunate to have not only these honored individuals, but the superb faculty that are to my left with us today and every day in the classrooms, laboratories, and scores of healthcare settings. I would ask the following individuals to please stand as I name you and to remain standing so that we can recognize all of our teachers and preceptor of the year collectively. Our current teachers of the year are Dr. Michael Farley, Dr. John Swagel, and Dr. Jeffrey Reist. And our preceptor of the year is Dr. Michael Ernst. Please join me in acknowledging the accomplishments and well-deserved recognition of these faculty. Seated next is soon to be Dr. Chelsea Mead, who I'll introduce in a moment. And then there is a William Wimmer. Uh, Bill is today's distinguished commencement speaker, and I will more formally introduce him later in the program as well. And next, Mr. Bruce Harold. President Harold is the University of Iowa's 21st president. And once again, I will introduce President Harold as he confers degrees to today's graduates. Lastly, I want to take a moment to say a special word about the man seated to my immediate left, to your far right, Dr. Lloyd Matheson. You see, today, this has been Dr. Matheson's 40, 43rd and final year of teaching. Professor Matheson has been selected Teacher of the Year many times, including recognition by this very class in 2015. Dr. Matheson's unwavering commitment to students is beyond any superlatives that I could enumerate. His compassion, wisdom, and commitment to the highest professional ideals is on display constantly, and to say the least, we will miss him is an understatement. I know his presence on stage today is bittersweet and that it marks the end of a remarkable career. I'm asking all of his faculty colleagues present today and the class of 2018 to please join me in recognizing one of the finest professors I have ever personally known, Dr. Lloyd Matheson. Thank you very much. During today's special ceremony, Drs. Farley and Squago will hood the graduates, and Dr. Matheson will assist me with distribution of the diplomas. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Dr. Reist for serving as today's faculty marshal. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of other dignitaries in attendance. First, seated just below me right here, Ms. Kate Gaynor. Kate is the Executive Director and CEO of the IR Pharmacy Association. I want to share with all of you in the audience here today that our college has a very special distinction. 
We are the only college of pharmacy in the United States of America that can boast 100% membership of our student body and our state pharmacy association. How is that made possible? The pharmacists in our state provide the resources to pay the dues for our students because they believe so strongly in the importance of active engagement in our state pharmacy association. We arguably have the most progressive pharmacy association in the United States, and that is a tribute to Kate and the rest of her team. Kate, thank you for joining us here today. And seated in the same row is Mr. Tom Temple. Tom's actually an alumnus of our college, and he is CEO Emeritus of the Iowa Pharmacy Association, a, 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 a responsibility that he held for 34 years. He's currently the chair of the United States Pharmacopeia, which is an oversight body of, of, for quality of drugs manufactured throughout the world. He's past chair of the University of Iowa Alumni Association, and he is recipient of the college's Osterhaus Medal for Lifetime Achievement, our college's Pinnacle Award. Tom, thanks for joining us here today. Our college has two boards. A Pinnacle, uh, pardon me, our Executive Leadership Board, which helps us with strategy and philanthropy. Unfortunately, none of our board, we have ex officio members like Tom and Kate and Dr. Brownlee and others who are here today joining us, but none of our board members who were with us just this past Thursday and Friday for our board meeting could be here today. But our Genesis board, our Genesis board is committed to student success, and this is a board comprised of individuals who have graduated 15 years or less. We're fortunate today to have at least two Genesis board members that I know about. One we have uh, in front of us here is Dr. Sam Andreg. Uh, Sam's brother, one of his brothers, will be graduating today, so Sam's actually going to have the opportunity to hood his brother. And the other is Dr. Matthew Wittry. And where's Matt? Matt's right over here, a professor of ours who also serves. He's a graduate, both PharmD and PhD, and serves on our Genesis board. Are there any other Genesis board members in attendance today? If you are here, could you please rise so we could acknowledge all of you at the same time? Anyone else? Okay, Matt and Sam, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you. And lastly, but very importantly, I want to give special thanks to Amy Ruth McGraw. Amy is a lecturer for the World Languages, Literatures, and Cultures Department here at the university. And she is our sign language interpreter here today, and we very much appreciate her services. Please. Thank you so much. You guys look fabulous. I've been asked by the graduates to assure all parents in attendance that your daughters and sons dress this, dress this way each and every day that they attended class throughout their time here at the University of Iowa. If you believe that, well, we don't need to complete that sentence, do we? All kidding aside, you look most professional. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce soon to be Dr. Chelsea Mead, the president of the class of 2018. Chelsea Jo Mead is from West Liberty, Iowa. She serves as president of the class, as I just mentioned. She has held many positions in Kappa Psi Pharmaceutical Fraternity and has worked as a clinical pharmacy intern at Mercy Medical Center in Cedar Rapids. Chelsea has been very heavily involved in mentoring and leadership development throughout her time in pharmacy school and proudly represented our college in the 2017 ASHP Clinical Skills Competition in Florida. Chelsea will be completing a PGY-1, PGY-2 ambulatory care pharmacy residency at UIHC. In my mind, Chelsea epitomizes the type of balanced student we are trying to nurture here at the UI College of Pharmacy. 
academically driven, professionally engaged, and exemplary in demeanor. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Chelsea Mee to the podium where she will provide remarks representing the outstanding class of 2018. Chelsea? Thank you, Dean Latender. Even from a young age, we know intuitively that the motive behind an action is the most important piece of any story. If you've ever met a toddler, you know that one of their most favorite words is why. Being a pharmacy student is kind of like being a toddler in the sense that we're always asking and being asked this question. Why? Why does this specific medication work the way that it does? Why should we make this recommendation for our patient? Why does Dr. Reese's hair always look so fabulous? <laughs> and I guarantee on our University of Iowa College of Pharmacy interview four short years ago, each one of us was asked the question, why? Why do you want to be a pharmacist? The answers varied from the desire to help others to the desire to preserve a legacy and so on. For me, this question was always both incredibly difficult, but also inexplicably simple for me to answer. You see, my why is more of a who, and I like to call that who Grandma Mary. <clears throat> she was the most amazing woman I will ever know, and she played a big part in making me who I am today. She single-handedly shaped how I choose to see the world, which may seem outwardly ironic, seeing as she was completely blind. She taught me to be passionate and relentless and seeing the whole world with eyes wide open. She taught me how blessed she was to never have her perception clouded by physical judgment or prejudices. She taught me that sight has absolutely nothing to do with the person's vision. She taught me that problems are only ever as big as you allow them to be and disabilities can be considered superpowers if only you choose to see them that way. She had a seventh grade education, but she was one of the most intelligent, eloquent, and inspiring women I've ever met. With hard work and determination, she consistently reshaped what I believe to be possible. She lived through the Great Depression, raised eight children, and had more grit than I can dream of. She taught me to take complete responsibility of both my own happiness and my shortcomings. And most importantly, she taught me that a one-to-one -one solution of laughter and kindness can cure almost anything which may seem weird, but you can trust me, I'm a pharmacist now. <laughs> you see, where you've been does not determine where or how far you can go. And what you do matters, but why you do it matters so much more. My grandma Mary is the reason why I, a first-generation college student, have fought so hard for the honor of receiving this degree today. I wanted to share this story with you all because I know I'm not alone. To some of these graduates, you are that who, that why, that motivation. Their answer to the question, why do you want to be a pharmacist? Therefore, to our loved ones, on behalf of us all, thank you for your encouragement and support today, 
in all the days that have come and in all that will follow. These last four years have not been easy. My strong, intelligent, and if I do say so myself, exceptionally good-looking classmates have given their blood, sweat, and tears to be here. Blood, because we don't learn how to give immunizations without practice, and I won't mention any names, <laughs> but some of us needed the practice. Sweat, because realistically, only a handful of us managed to completely conquer procrastination and or public speaking, which <laughs> is why I am really glad it's just me and 1,100 of my closest friends here today. <laughs> and finally, tears, because if we didn't cry at some pharmacology exam score or at some <laughs> spilled coffee rolling down the Zoff floor, <laughs> leaving a trail of soaked backpacks in its path. We undoubtedly cried when Dr. Lo Lloyd Matheson addressed us on his last day at the College of Pharmacy. Dr. Matheson embodies the definition of dedication. He has given his whole heart to the College of Pharmacy. And today, like Dean Latender said, the class of 2018 marks the 43rd and last graduating class that has had the opportunity to learn from him. Dr. Matheson is a shining example of the caliber of remarkable faculty seen here at our university. It is known that being a great teacher or mentor is one of the most difficult jobs in the world, but our faculty make it look effortless. Therefore, to Dr. Matheson, to our exceptional deans, professors, preceptors, mentors, and all faculty, on behalf of the class of 2018, thank you for sharing your time, your patience, and your knowledge. To the graduating class of 2018, we did it. For ourselves, for all of our loved ones sitting in the audience, and for those who can't be here with us today. For our outstanding professors, for the pharmacy profession, and for our future patients. Never forget your why, your who, or your what for. Remember, successful people don't achieve their dreams by accident. Smile often, create change, seek discomfort, grow. Embrace the uncertainty of what comes next. It has been said, a ship is always safe at shore, but that's not what it's built for. So be relentless in your determination going forward and practice unwavering kindness. I am so unbelievably proud of you all, and I cannot wait to watch you change the world. Thank you, congratulations, and go Hawks. For someone that's not done a lot of public speaking, Chelsea, you knocked it out of the park. So <laughs> join me again in thanking Chelsea for a great presentation. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge some of, of Chelsea's loved ones who are here today. And I would ask that they stand as I recognize them and remain standing so we could acknowledge all of you at once. Uh, Chelsea's parents, her mom, uh, Joanne, and dad, Rick, are here. Where are they? Where are they? There they are. Uh, her her fiancé, Dustin McIntyre, and soon-to-be in-laws, uh, Dustin's parents, Peggy and Phil McIntyre. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Chelsea's family here today. Uh, Dustin, we'll, we'll visit later, Dustin, about uh, this impending marriage here. I, I, I have, uh, I'm very close to my students. I just want you to... Now, I am especially pleased to introduce to you our distinguished commencement speaker, William J. Wimmer, who we all fondly refer to is Bill. Normally, I would introduce him in a much more formal way, but I'll just simply use Bill because honestly, in the world of pharmacy, everyone knows him as Bill, including our students. Before I tell you a little bit about Bill, I would like to call attention to the medallion that Bill has on him that he's wearing today. For those of you that were able, to, and that's the majority of you, were able to make last night's senior dinner banquet, we bestowed upon Bill a very special keepsake, a medallion that he will keep later on to recognize today's commencement address. So when he comes up here, I just wanted to acknowledge that, that that uh, medallion is something that we established about eight or nine years ago and has now become part of our tradition here at Iowa. And we felt so honored to be able to place that on Bill's shoulders last evening. For the past 38 years, Bill has served as legislative counsel for the Iowa Pharmacy Association, advocating for the profession's interests before governors, legislators, and policymakers. During this time, he has not only witnessed, but has helped facilitate the transformation of the profession's role in the healthcare system. He is a founding partner in the Des Moines-based law firm of Wasker, Dorr, Wimmer, and Marcoulier. His legal practice specializes in government relations activity, representing a number of state and national organizations. Bill is a native of Creston, Iowa. He earned his associate's degree from Southwest Community College, his BS degree from Northwest Missouri State University. Bill then attended a master's program in speech communications at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. And in 1976, he received his JD degree from, Cumberland, from the Cumberland School of Law at Samford University. After graduation, Bill returned home to here, Iowa, here in Iowa, and he currently resides in Des Moines. In 1980, the Iowa Pharmacy Association contracted with Bill to serve as his first full-time legislative advocate. Over the past four decades, he provided lobbying support for the profession on a host of professional and economic issues. In particular, Bill's work contributed to several notable achievements for the profession, including, and this is a very short list, ladies and gentlemen, enactment of a Contemporary Pharmacy Practice Act, creation of laws enabling collaborative practice and immunization, which Chelsea was mentioning in her speech, immunization authority and therapeutic interchange, passage of professional payment system for pharmacist services, and more recently, more recently, closer to home, Bill worked with us in helping to secure an appropriation for our new College of Pharmacy facility. An appropriation, by the way, that by a factor of two and a half is the largest single appropriation for an educational facility in state's history. And make no mistake about it, Bill was working very closely with the university lobbyists in helping to make that occur. This partial list of accomplishments only begins to detail the many accolades that Iowa Pharmacy has received from policymakers for the positive way in which pharmacy is advocated before state government. And while Bill has always been the guy behind the scenes, as I noted, he has quietly served on the kitchen cabinets, if you will, of former governor and secretary of agriculture Tom Vilsack, U.S. Senator Tom Harkin, Congressman Tom, uh, Leonard Boswell, and several individual legislators. <clears throat> that, too, has benefited the pharmacy profession by enhancing its connection with key lawmakers. And while Bill is widely regard, 
recognized for his involvement in democratic circles, he established him himself as a respected and credible voice of reason and integrity by government officials from both sides of the aisle. Bill has been recognized by the AV peer review rating by Martindale Hubble, and since 2011 has been selected a number of times by the best lawyers in America. In 2002, he received the Iowa Association for Justice's Distinguished Service Award. In 2006, the Iowa Supreme Court Exceptional Service Award. In 2013, he became an honorary member, an honorary alum of our College of Pharmacy. And in 2018, he received the Iowa Pharmacy Association's highly distinguished Robert G. Gibbs Pharmacist Award. Bill will be formally retiring at the end of this legislative session. And by virtue of his presence here today, we simply want to thank him for his work on behalf of pharmacy and pay tribute to him for his dedicated commitment to helping shape a positive future for the pharmacy profession, the one that our graduates here today will be working in throughout their career. So ladies and gentlemen, it is with profound admiration that I welcome to the podium this year's distinguished commencement speaker, Dr. William J. Wimmer. President Harold, Dean Latender, faculty, distinguished faculty, I might add, friends and relatives of the graduating class of 2018, and of course, our honored guest, the class of 2018. Congratulations. This is not the end of a journey. This is the midsection of a journey, and it's going to be exciting from here on out, I can assure you. You know, uh, Don Latender talked about the fact that I am a lobbyist, and an awful lot of people have uh, their own opinions as to what a lobbyist is, and not all of them are all that good sometimes. But the most recent definition of a lobbyist is this, and that is the person that you hire to protect you from the people you elect. Now think about that for just a little while. <laughs> we also have a saying over on the Hill as lobbyists that just because you're paranoid doesn't mean somebody's not after you because they usually are. I uh, want to thank you for that very glowing introduction Dean Latender, I, I, are you sure you were reading my biography when you put that together? I don't think I recognize a lot of that stuff. I want to do three things today. I want to, first of all, give you a little an idea of my track through undergraduate school. Then I want to talk about the pharmacy profession uh, as I saw it and see it as I'm leaving uh, the practice. And I also want to talk to you a little bit about uh, political, uh, our political system and where I think it may need to go. I had a journey that is much different from most of you, I think, and, and it, it may be a little bit of interest, and I hope it is. When I started college, I started at Southern Colorado State College in Pueblo, Colorado, and we were on the quarter system in, uh, in Pueblo, and I took 14 credit hours the first quarter, and I came back to Creston, Iowa, my hometown, for a holiday, and decided I didn't want to go back to Southern Colorado. I wanted to stay in Creston at Southwestern Community College and continue my baseball career. So I transferred my credits back to Southwestern Community College. When they transferred them back, they transferred my quarter hours back as semester hours. So lo and behold, I just gained four hours of credit that I didn't take. So I spent my two years at Southwestern Community College and finished it up. And at the end of that two years, I had 60 credits, which is what you have to have for an Associate of Arts degree. However, 58 of them were academic and two of them were, were physical education because I was playing baseball. So that really didn't qualify me for an Associate of Arts degree. But at that time, the community colleges in Iowa were trying very hard to get accredited, and graduates was what they needed in order to accomplish the accreditation. So the dean asked me, he said, look, if we waive that two-hour requirement for you, will you accept an Associate of Arts degree? And being the kind person that I am, I said, sure. <laughs> and I took it. And then I transferred to Northwest Missouri State University and finished out my two years on a, on a debate scholarship. At the beginning of my senior year, I had plenty of credit hours because I'd been going the year around ever since I went down there. But I found out that I had not, I neglected that was what I'd done to take some of the core requirements that you need for, for, for a degree. 
I hadn't had math. I hadn't had science. I hadn't had a foreign language. Now, math and science don't scare you guys like they scare me. There's a reason why people go to law schools, because we aren't with a damn in, in math and science. So anyway, I needed to take 18 hours my first semester of my senior year and 17 second semester in order to have all the core requirements that I needed for a, uh, a Bachelor of Science degree. Well, I signed up for those classes and I dutifully went to them. And two weeks into my senior year, and I don't believe this now, but it's true, two weeks into my senior year, the Board of Regents of Missouri got together and they passed a resolution and it said, if you have an Associate of Arts degree, which I had, from an accredited community college, which Southwest, Southwestern was, will waive your core requirements. <laughs> I tell you what, I did a dash to the administration building and dropped those classes as quick as I could. <laughs> and finally graduated with my Bachelor of Science degree. Tickled to death to have it. Now I hope the statute of limitations has run on what I just told you. <laughs> and I will tell you that I can assure you that I have all the credit hours necessary for my law degree and I did take and pass the Iowa bar. Thank you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's about what my undergraduate degree was worth, I tell you what, one clap. <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit about pharmacy now. Uh, it has been a privilege for me for the last 38 years to be your representative before the Iowa legislature, the governor's office, the administrative agencies, some on the, on the federal level, but not much. I've seen an awful lot of change in your profession uh, during that period of time. Uh, the perception of pharmacist at the very beginning of my tenure was people who counted tablets, poured liquids, typed labels, stick them on vials and give them to patients, and that was about it. They had no appreciation for what it was that you do as, as a pharmacist. And uh, as a result, people inside the legislature didn't understand what you did either. In fact, one policymaker at about that time told me that what pharmacists were were white-coated blender salesmen, and that offended us to no end. Tom Temple was upset about it. I was upset about it. Everybody involved in, in pharmacy was upset about it. We decided that we needed to do something different. So Tom authorized us to introduce a piece of legislation which would allow therapeutic substitution in community pharmacies. Now, as you well know, your colleagues in the hospital setting have been doing that for years and years and years. We were going to try, to try to extend it to the community pharmacy setting. We passed it through the House of Representatives with very little opposition. And then all of a sudden, Pfizer, Lilly, and Upjohn realized what we were doing, and they descended upon the Capitol. The Des Moines Chamber of Commerce was thrilled with it because these people came in and they stayed. They, came, they went to our hotels, they drank in our bars, they ate in our restaurants, and it was an economic development boon for Polk County. It didn't do our legislative package any good, though. Finally, we were able to get the bill passed through the Senate and sent to the governor. And as soon as it hit the governor's desk, Pfizer, Lilly, and Upjohn flew their private jets in with their CEOs, CFOs, COOs, and any other COs they had, and met with Governor Branstead, and he vetoed our therapeutic substitution bill. We didn't get therapeutic substitution, but what we did was we let people know that we were here to stay, we were not going away, and we were going to, we were going to advance this profession. Because up until that time, I had designated in my mind that what the problem was was that you were the most underutilized healthcare professional for the education and skills that you had, and nobody appreciated it. And we were going to make sure somebody did appreciate it. <laughs> After we got the pharmaceutical manufacturer's attention, I was having coffee with one of their reps in the, in the cafeteria at the Capitol one day, and I asked him, I said, look, we aren't introducing therapeutic substitution anymore, so why in the world are you guys spending so much time in Iowa? You're here all the time. Why are you doing that? His answer to me was simple. He said, Bill, he says, if we want to know what's going on and going to happen in pharmacy over the next five years nationally, we come to Iowa because it's probably happening here right now. That is the greatest compliment, I think, that your profession could have had at that time. We had, become, we had become more than what we thought we were, and we were on our way up, and we continued to rise. But it's no accident, it's no accident that Iowa is that progressive part of pharmacy profession that Dean Latender talked about. And if you think about it, look at this. Look at what we have with the administrators and the faculty at the University of Iowa. Take a look over at Drake with their administrators and their faculty, uh, the, the Drake University School of Pharmacy. 
the Board of Pharmacy that we have in Iowa, which is progressive and does some really good stuff. And then you overlay that with the Iowa Pharmacy Association that's second to none across the country. We have a four-legged stool that we're building on, and that's the reason why there is no accident that pharmacy progressiveness is right here in Iowa. Now let me turn for just a minute, if I can. And I understand that my time is limited, and I'm not, I'm not the smartest person in this room, I'm sure, but I do realize that with you sitting where you are and those diplomas sitting where they are and me in between, I don't like my odds. <laughs> there are some things I think that are, used to exist in our governing process that don't exist anymore, and I've got three examples that I want to give you, and they're examples because they are things that I experienced when, 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 I, was, when I was lobbying. The first that we don't have in our politics political systems anymore, in my opinion, is trust. We don't have trust. The Democrats don't trust the Republicans. The Republicans don't trust the Democrats. Republicans don't trust Republicans, and Democrats don't trust Democrats. We don't have any trust. Back in the 1980s, the mid-1980s, the Democrats had control of the Iowa Senate, and they had uh, their, their appropriations chair, a gentleman by the name of Larry Murphy, really good, good, credible man. His job was to put together a, a budget and present it to his colleagues for debate and amendment and then send it to the governor for the, the state to operate on. He found that in this particular year, he didn't have enough revenue to make his, bu make his budget balance. Constitutionally, we have to do that. So he decided that he was going to raise the tax on cigarettes by eight cents, and that was gonna give him enough money to, to uh, uh, balance his budget. Well, at that time, my partner and I represented this tobacco industry, and we didn't like that. So we lobbied against this thing all during the course of the session. And at the very end of the session, I presented a deal to Senator Murphy, and here's the deal that I presented to him. I said, Senator, I said, I will not resist you passing an eight cent tax on cigarettes if you promise me that you'll put a sunset clause on five cents of it. Now, a sunset clause is something which is not used all that often, but it's a very effective tool because you put it on a piece of legislation and upon the happening of, a, of an event, a condition precedent, or a passage of time, that legislation goes away as if it never existed. And I said, we'll come back next year and we'll see whether I'm right that you only need three cents or you're right that you need eight cents, and then we'll deal with it next year. If you find next year that you needed eight, I will not resist you lifting the sunset and making that tax permanent. If on the other hand, you only needed three, you will let the, let the five cents sunset, sunset. Now that's 12 months we sat on this thing and we came back the next year and to Larry Murphy's credit, he came to me and he said, Bill, I've looked at it. You were right, I needed three and not five. I'm gonna let that sunset. That would never happen in this environment. Now, I've been thinking about the things that are wrong with our system and how we might fix them for a good number of months since I've been looking at my retirement. And I've talked to a lot of legislators about that very example, and they tell me the same thing. It would not happen in this environment because there's not enough trust, and we've got to get back to trust. The second thing that we used to have that we don't have now is bipartisanship, and that's Democrats and Republicans working together to solve problems. As it is right now, if the majority party, whether it's in Washington or in the state capitol in Des Moines, if the majority party doesn't have the votes within their caucus to pass the House and the Senate, they don't bring a bill to the, to the floor because they don't count on members from, from the other party. In 1989, I was hired by a bunch of, uh, a group of bankers because they wanted to pass a bill called interstate banking. That's what allows U.S. Bank, uh, Wells Fargo, uh, Citibank, and all those banks to be operating in Iowa. And they hired me to, to pass that, that piece of legislation. And when they hired me, I went to see the Speaker of the House, Don Avenson, who also was a proponent of interstate banking. And we had a conversation as to how we were gonna get this thing done. And what, we finally, what he finally told me was, Bill, he said, you go out into the House chamber and you find 45 votes in favor of interstate banking. And here are 10 legislators you can't talk to. You come back with your 45, I'll get the other six out of that 10 and we'll pass interstate banking. Now, Don Avenson didn't say to me, Bill, go find 45 Democrats. He didn't say go find 45 Republicans. He didn't say go 40, find 45 independents. He said find 45 people that will support interstate banking. That's bipartisanship. 
and we depend on each other in bipartisanship, and we don't have that anymore. And think about it. One of the reasons it, it's solutions that are made solely by one party are not long-term solutions, usually, because that party's not going to be in control forever, and when the other party comes into control, they wipe it out. Look at the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. It was all done by Democrats, and now the Republicans want to eliminate it. it that's just an example. We have got to do solutions through a bipartisan mechanism. And number three, and this one may be the most important, and that is political courage. We don't have political courage like we used to have. We used to have statesmen, we call them, but we don't have that anymore. The example I want to tell you about political courage, um, one of the bills that I was fortunate enough to uh, be a lobbyist to pass was the lottery bill which we obviously still have here in Iowa. We passed it, by the way, three times before Governor Branstead signed it. He vetoed it the first two times. But the first time that it passed, the other lobbyists and I that were working on it had 50 votes in the House. We needed 51, but we had 50 confirmed, and we were having a devil of a time finding the 51st one. And the Speaker of the House said, this is the last day of the session. We're going to put that thing up for a vote, no matter whether you, got the, whether you have the votes or not. So finally, he called it up for final passage vote, and I was up in the gallery to watch. And when they put their votes up, their green lights come up and the red lights come up, and we're looking at the board, and they're coming up real slow. And somebody invoked Rule 76 in the House. Now, when Rule 76 is invoked in the House, what that means is that the clerk closes the voting machine, and they call the roll of all the people who haven't yet voted. And if you've not yet voted, and they call your name in the roll, you have to vote. I, nay, or present. So they closed the machine, they called the roll, they got down to one legislator left. His name is Mike Van Camp from the eastern part of the state. He was in his first term as a House member. He was the only one yet to vote, and we were sitting on 50 affirmative votes. Now imagine this, he's a freshman legislator sitting at his chair, and standing right behind him with his hand on his shoulder is the governor's lobbyist. And the governor was not in favor of the bill. Mike Van Camp voted aye and gave us the 51st vote for the, for the lottery bill to pass. That is political courage. You don't have that much anymore. Now then, you may ask or may wonder, why am I sharing this with you today? The reason I am is because George Gallup has a poll, and he's done a poll for years and years and years and years, ranking the professions in this country. And if you're not number one, you're within the top two or three every time that poll comes out. You are, when you walk across this stage, grab that diploma, you're walking in to the most respected profession that you'll ever find long term. I have no doubt about that. And the reason it's important is because when you then go into your practice setting, whether it's community pharmacy, hospital, long-term care, research, academia, wherever you go, you're going to be a respected member of that community, and I want you to commit to me today that you will get involved. Now, a number of you have gotten involved, and we had uh, at last night's award ceremony, you gave an award, a list of awards for excellence in community engagements. That's what I'm talking about. I want you to be a member of your school board, of your planning and, uh, uh, planning and zoning commission, your city council. In addition to pharmacy, I want you to be involved in those other areas because you are respected. People will listen to you. You can, and your generation will, in my opinion, reestablish trust, bipartisanship, and political courage into this thing because you're not going to let it be any other way. This is a great day. This is a great day. I think probably next to my own profession of law, I love the pharmacy profession more than anything else. I've been with you since 1980, and I've watched all the things that have gone right, and I've witnessed the things that have gone wrong. I would like to leave on this note, and that is when you have the senior banquet next year for the graduating class of 2019, I would like to have you students offer another award, and that award is the student who is most likely to run for public office and to carry this message of trust, bipartisanship, and political courage to the rest of the world. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of today.
Bill, thank you so much for those inspiring words. There's so many takeaways. Three words that I'll remember, aside from the ones in the charge that Bill gave you, persistence, perseverance, and patience. But I certainly do like his suggestion that we give an award for who was the most likely to be elected. As I do believe that that is a wonderful challenge, a wonderful gauntlet that he threw down for us to pursue in the years to come. Bill, thank you again. I'm just reflecting on all the wonderful things that you said. And once again, on behalf of the entire uh, profession of pharmacy here in the state of Iowa, I just want to express our heartfelt appreciation for your years of dedicated service to the profession of pharmacy and helping us to get to where we are today. One more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Bill Wimmer. In addition to retirement, Bill's actually been a pretty busy guy. And one of the things he's been very busy at is falling in love again. And uh, recently, Bill just got engaged. Uh, yes. I haven't got to witness the, uh, the ring last night. I could hardly pick the daggone thing up. But uh, Bill's fiance, Karen Tig is with us here today, and I'd like Karen to stand so we could recognize you. Karen? Thank you for being here. Before we move to the conferring of degrees, I have one special acknowledgement. This, too, has become a tradition of our college, and it is to acknowledge military personnel. You see, each and every year, and this is an unfortunate statement about the times we live in, but there are members, loved ones, of our graduates who can't be here today because they are helping to keep our country secure. Indeed, we enjoy many freedoms because of the sacrifices that these individuals make. Those present today who have served or are currently serving in the military, could you please stand so that we could recognize you? All of those serving or who have served in the military, please stand so we could recognize you. And lastly, before we proceed, may I ask all of you, please, to join me for a moment of silence as a gesture of thanks to those who are serving our country and cannot be with us here today. Thank you. Bruce Harold became the 21st president of the University of Iowa on November 2nd, 2015. He received a Bachelor of Engineering degree from Purdue University and a Master of Business Administration degree from Harvard. President Harold served on the faculty of Harvard Business School from 2008 to 2014 with dual appointments to the Entrepreneurial and Strategy Units. He was faculty chair of the Building New Businesses in Established Organizations program. He has served in several corporate leadership positions with Kraft General Foods, Boston Market Company, and IBM, focusing on strategy and transformation. And just as an aside, fitting tools for a president in today's world. 
President Harold has also served as a consultant on leadership, organic growth, and strategic renewal. President Harold is the author or co-author of numerous articles and book chapters, and has also authored or co-author several case studies for Harvard Business Publications. We are deeply honored to have President Harold with us this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to this podium Iowa's 21st president, Mr. Bruce Terrell. Good morning. It's a very joyous occasion. For those of you that uh, don't hang around a college or university campus, this is about as good as it gets this time of year. This is a time of year where most of us are, almost every night, celebrating the successes of our students, the retirements of a number of great mentors and faculty, reminiscing as alumni come back. It all started for me last Friday. Some of you may have heard about our REACH program, but about a decade ago, we decided to actually do something about the college age adolescents at that age that are in our midst but may not have a chance because of learning disabilities to experience college life. And so we've reached into that community across the United States and built a program that helps them realize their educational potential. They come and join our campus with all sorts of learning disabilities, 25 of them, and they spend two or sometimes three and for a few four years in our midst learning how to live their life independently. And it's just an amazing outpouring of kindness, relief, and you'll see them probably even still today on our campus out on the Pentecost in their caps and gowns with their families from all over the United States getting their pictures taken. And then as the weeks progressed, we've had a few more celebrations. And throughout them, there's a common theme. And with all of the issues that we're dealing with, it is simply one word, hope. You can see it, you can feel it, and in so many ways that you're hugging and talking about what's coming next. We here at this university are here because of hope. We believe in the power of education, the power for all of you who are graduating here in a few minutes to rise up and make a difference in this world. We believe that that's directly proportionable to the education, the mentoring, the tutoring, in the classroom, and the significant amount of time you spent outside of class. Because there is a reason why this isn't all online, as a lot of pundits think. There is something else that happens on a residential campus like ours. We see each other day to day, and it isn't all just the magic in a classroom, although that's pretty important. It's also the social occasions the clubs, the activities, the leadership roles, and the followership roles that a lot of us get for the first time in our lives at any significant level happens here among our midst. And I think there's several things that we learn, and I'd like to charge you a few of these as we start commencing. And don't forget that this isn't a graduation as much as it is a commencement. This is not the end of something. This is the beginning of something. This is the beginning of your professional careers. First, I'd like to charge you to be yourself. Trust in yourself. Have comfort with yourself. Know your strengths and for sure know your weaknesses. And make sure you surround people around you who actually can support you and cover for your weaknesses, as uncomfortable as sometimes that may seem. And hopefully, you've now found yourself 
and you're prepared. You're prepared to do something that all Hawkeyes do because we're hawks after all. We soar, we rise, and we're expecting it out of you. Secondly, I'd like all of you to reflect on some of the words that have already been spoken here. You didn't get here by yourself. And if you would indulge me, I'd like all the graduates to stand up, turn around, and thank all of those family members, friends, supporters who got you here. Give them a big round of applause. And by the way, as you're sitting down, wave at this crew as well, because they're part of that club. <laughs> Dean Lintender, if you've done nothing else, and all the faculty, they now are perfect in taking directions from a complete stranger, so well done. But there's a point here. Never forget how you got here. You got here by yourself with help. You're going to go out into the world, and you're going to see a lot of people who could use your helping hand as well. Grab it. That's what we Hawkeyes do. We help people when they need it. That's what we humans do. That's what life's all about. Then finally, I want you to remember we're always here to help you. I want you to re return to campus. Bring back your experiences. Bring back your wisdom. Hopefully when you do, soon, we'll have a new building for you. And that'll be fun to dedicate. And I hope you all come for that dedication. But remember, once a Hawkeye, always a Hawkeye. There's several things from this day forward that people can never take away from you. One is who you are. Two, you the knowledge that you've gained. And thirdly, from this moment forward, you will always have a University of Iowa degree. Congratulations. It's been great having you in our midst. And now let's get on with the main event. Graduates, please rise. President Harold, these candidates have completed all of the requirements for the degree, Doctor of Pharmacy, and are recommended to you by the faculty of the College of Pharmacy for the conferring of their degrees. On recommendation of the faculty of the College of Pharmacy and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, I confer on each of you the degree of Doctor of Pharmacy as qualified and designated. Congratulations. Please be seated. President Harold, thank you very much for your words of inspiration and for presenting the charge to our, our candidates here today. When you think about both our commencement speaker and the words of President Harold, there are some, some important goals that we have ahead of us. And I appreciate more than words can convey uh, the, both the inspiration and the enthusiasm with which those charges have been directed to you. At this time, I am very pleased to ask Associate Dean Kelly to come to the podium where we will begin the, the actual uh, hooding and issuance of your diplomas. Dean Kelly. Uh, it is now my great honor and pleasure to introduce to you the members of the class of 2018. Today, each student will be receiving a hood this is a symbol of doctoral education. As the faculty marched in, you probably noticed that the trailing hoods are of many colors. The length and shape of the hood indicate the degree that is granted. 
The lining displays the official colors of the university awarding the degree, and the velvet trim indicates the field of study. The hood the students will receive today has an olive coloring that indicates the clinical doctorate of pharmacy. Stars on the gown indicate the levels of academic achievement. These are noted in the pro program. The cords being worn by some students indicate selected achievements. The purple and white cords are for high academic achievement and membership in the Rokai Honor Society. The green and gold cords indicate high achievement in leadership and membership in the Phi Lambda Sigma fraternity. The black and gold cords are given to those students that have demonstrated a dedication to community service and have earned the College of Pharmacy Excels Award. A number of the graduates will receive their hoods from family members that are pharmacists. I will now ask the graduates to begin to line up to my left, one row at a time, and I will introduce the graduates to you. There is a professional photographer that will take photographs of each graduate. If you would like, please feel free to come forward towards the front and take pictures of your own. As mentioned earlier, Drs. Mike Farley and John Swigel will be hooding our graduates. Dr. Chelsea Mead, West Liberty, Iowa. Chelsea is also graduating with a cer teaching certificate. Dr. Alexandra Carlson, Lake Zurich, Illinois. Dr. Quinton Franklin, Woodridge, Illinois. Dr. Brooke Bennett, Otteson, Iowa. Dr. Lindsay Benedict, Marthasville, Missouri. Dr. Beth Miss Kimmons Mills, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Dr. Abby Baker, Mineral Point, Wisconsin. Dr. Lynn Rich, Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> Dr. Lita Watzmeyer, Wacon, Iowa. Dr. Chloe Chabot, Oxford, Iowa. She will be hooded by William Baker, class of 1979, in honor of her late father, Rob Schauble, 1979. Dr. Cassandra Jen, Iowa City, Iowa. Dr. Emily Anderson, Bellevue, Iowa. Dr. Sarah Bechtel, Ankeny, Iowa. Dr. Emily Henningsen, Preston, Iowa. Dr. Alyssa Breitbach, Farley, Iowa. Dr. Tori Punchakar, Shoreview, Minnesota. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Janice Carmody, Pipestone, Minnesota. Dr. Samantha Alucas, Homewood, Illinois. Dr. Sarah Tortora, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. She will be hooded by her father, Mike Tortora, a graduate of the college. <laughs> Dr. Claire Weedman, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Dr. Weedman will also receive the Master of Public Health at the graduation. She will be hooded by her mother, Madonna Weedman, and her father, Bob Weedman, both graduates of the College of Pharmacy. Dr. Lauren Fisher, Wapalo, Iowa. Dr. Emily DeWall, Madrid, Iowa. Dr. Whitney Endoigo, Mogotio, Kenya. Dr. Eva Serum, Nairobi, Kenya. Dr. Zoe Walters, Brooklyn, Michigan. Dr. Joe Frazier, Fort Dodge, Iowa. Dr. Alicia Rottinghouse, Charles City, Iowa. Dr. Amanda Steffel, Grundy Center, Iowa. She will be hooded by her father, David Steffel, and her brother, Matt Steffel, both graduates of the College of Pharmacy. Dr. Claire North, Altoona, Iowa. Dr. K.T. Horion, Waterloo. Dr. Margaret Langloy, Bloomington, Illinois. Dr. Samantha Caronda, Zwingle, Iowa. She will be, <laughs> she will be hooded by uh, cousin Stevie Veach, a member of our faculty. Looks like we're kind of. Dr. Sarah Sorensen, Sioux City, Iowa. She will, she she will be hooded by her father, Bill Drilling. Graduate of the college. <laughs> Dr. Angela Wojak, Orland Park, Illinois. Dr. Mara Plifka, Apple Valley, Minnesota. Dr. Laurel Meyer, Cedar Rapids. What? 
Dr. Catherine Huseman, Dubuque, Iowa. Dr. Merrill Montgomery, Gainesville, Florida. Dr. John Edge, Mount Vernon, Iowa. Dr. Kyle Parkin, Iowa City, Iowa. Dr. James Poku Tabiri, Kumasi, Ghana. <laughs> Dr. Jenna Beninga, Ankeny, Iowa. Dr. Lindsay Tillow, West Burlington, Iowa. Dr. Kristen Clarenbeek, Alford, Iowa. Dr. Crystal Sherrill, Pittsboro, Indiana. Dr. Ashley Vold, Blaine, Minnesota. <laughs> Dr. Landon Neese, Davenport, Iowa. Dr. Abby Hendrickson, Mount Pleasant, Iowa. Dr. Carly Watertor, Bussey, Iowa. Dr. Watertor will also receive the Master of Public Health during graduation ceremonies this season. Dr. Ashley Lorenz, Waterloo, Iowa. Dr. Lorenz will also receive the Master of Public Health degree. Dr. Ann No. Johnston, Iowa. Dr. No will receive the Master of Science in Informatics degree this graduation season. Dr. Morgan Miller, Smithfield, Illinois. She will be hooded by her uncle, Troy Williams. Dr. Jade Feller, Bettendorf, Iowa. Dr. Mackenzie Welsh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Dr. Jillian Coos, Lamont, Iowa. Dr. Sarah Sugden. Maquanago, just like it sounds. Uh, Wisconsin, just like it's spelled, I guess. <laughs> I hope I got it right. <laughs> Dr. Emily Berger, Bloomington, Illinois. Okay, we're good. 
Dr. Kate Kim, Seoul, Korea. Dr. Jeon Han, Bettendorf, Iowa. Dr. Susie Lee, South Korea. Good. Dr. Nicholas Kaiser, Lake Mills, Iowa. Dr. Kaiser will also receive a teaching certificate. Dr. Jonathan Lochner, Central City, Iowa. Dr. Milo Wells, Milton, Iowa. Dr. Aaron Rush, Spokane, Washington. Dr. Joanna Rush, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Dr. Mel Melanie Reinecke, Boone, Iowa. Dr. Reinecke will also be receiving the Master of Public Health degree. Dr. Daisy Wang, Gurney, Illinois. Dr. Erica Fom, Iowa City, Iowa. Dr. Susanna Heckel, Independence, Iowa. Dr. Leanne Parks, Sioux City, Iowa. Dr. Jessica Beadleston, Kansas City, Missouri. Dr. Irene Soyeon Bay, Seoul, South Korea. Dr. Rochelle Yang, Iowa City, Iowa. Dr. An Luong, Des Moines, Iowa. Dr. Kyle Wynn, St. Cloud, Minnesota. <laughs> Dr. Sam Kazavarzi, he is from San Jose, California. He is being uh, hooded by his sister, uh, and I missed, I forgot her name already. Uh, her last name's Kejavarzi too. And it's a real pleasure to have you. Ramina, I think she told me. Ramina Kejavarzi. Is his sister a pharmacist? She did the honors. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. V. Lilak Kuakam, Des Moines, Iowa.
Dr. Lily Tao Huang, Saigon, Vietnam. She is receiving a teaching certificate as well. Dr. Nyak Pham, Ho Chi Minh, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Dr. Nathan Okioga. Nairobi, Kenya. Dr. Kelly Tower, Springfield, Minnesota. Casey O'Connell, Cedar Rapids. We won't split hairs. <laughs> Dr. Quinn Beelers, Sioux City, Iowa. Dr. Beelers will have also graduated with the Master of Public Health degree. Okay. Dr. Matt Austin, <laughs> Coralville, Iowa. David Liao, Fort Dodge, Iowa. Dr. Christian Sandoval, Aurora, Illinois. Dr. Kylie Bading, New Hampton, Iowa. Dr. Jacqueline Snyders, Rock Rapids, Iowa. She will be hooded by her sister, Denny Marcus. Dr. Rachel Perry, Lamars, Iowa. She's very proud. <laughs> Dr. Marissa Trouch, Cresco, Iowa. Dr. Tyler Nichols, Marshall, Missouri. He will be hooded by his mother, Lisa Nichols. Dr. Joseph Maygard, West Des Moines, Iowa. Dr. Ethan Sabers, Dubuque, Iowa. Dr. Christopher Peterson, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Dr. Jody Segrist, South Lake, Texas. Good day, it's a good day. Just a second. Dr. Trevor Satoff, Edwardsville, Illinois. Dr. Joshua Joe, IA Hawaii. <laughs> Dr. Adam Neubauer, Coon Rapids, Iowa.
Dr. Stephen Vavrock, Montezuma, Iowa. Dr. Cole McKenzie, Waverly, Iowa. Dr. Zachary Garten, Urbandale, Iowa. Dr. Casey Shug, Ida Grove, Iowa. Dr. Maxwell Andereg, Charles City, Iowa. He is being hooded by his brother, Samuel Andereg, Andereg a graduate of our college. <laughs> Dr. Rob Nauman, Iowa City, Iowa. Dr. Justin Kilberg, McKesney Park, Illinois. Dr. Julia Fluger, Iowa City, Iowa. And that is your class of 2018. I'm so happy for all of you. The smiles on your faces said it all. The only part that confused me was some of you wanted to walk away without your diploma. I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> but seriously, though, we're so happy for everything that you've accomplished. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't begin to tell you the degree of pride I have and the distinct pleasure that I have on behalf of our entire faculty to present to you the outstanding class of 2018. <laughs> Today, indeed, is a very special day. It marks the culmination of years of effort on the part of many and it represents the beginning of a new journey into healthcare in which each of these graduates will undoubtedly leave a profound mark upon all of whom they serve. 
I'd like to take a moment, please, to recognize our faculty. They're a very special group of individuals. For the past four years, the group of men and women seated to my left had given much to enrich the lives of our graduates, intellectually, emotionally, professionally, and I must add, depending upon the, su <clears throat> pardon me, the subject matter <clears throat> and level of preparation at exam time, spiritually. <laughs> Frankly, for a secular institution, I've witnessed a whole lot of praying at times. <laughs> we are indeed blessed to have a truly outstanding faculty and professional staff. Through their research, they're in constant quest of the next critical step in finding new drugs, or better ways to deliver health care, and through their scholarship of teaching, they're always striving to impart knowledge, stimulate critical thinking, and hone students' problem-solving abilities. Theirs is truly a labor of love. Faculty, may I ask you to please stand? I ask you to please join me in recognizing these very fine men and women for all that they have done for our graduates. Thank you. The events of the past two days have been simply outstanding. And they've gone on without a hitch because of our staff. All of you do so much behind the scenes in helping to bring a healthy measure of panache that ultimately makes our college so special and the envy of others. All the planning, attention to detail, and so many other things are evident in so many ways, and most especially in the quality of the functions that we hold. I feel very privileged, as you know, to serve as dean and have such capable, considerate, and caring staff as integral members of the entire college family. We have several staff here in attendance. My guess is most are out back, but a few might be over here up front. I'm asking, please, those staff who are in attendance, could you please stand so that we could join together in recognizing you, our staff, please, please. They're up on top and the top balcony up there, so thank you so much. I'd especially like to thank the parents, grandparents, spouses, and other family members and friends of the graduates. Your personal, moral, and of course financial support has been critical for these graduates who have achieved this important milestone in their lives today. May I ask, if, you're, if you are able, may I ask the parents, grandparents, spouses, and partners to please stand so that we can join with the class of 2018 and thank you for all of your love and encouragement. Please stand. Please stand. All right, one last time. And you know I couldn't get away without it. Professionalism. Big surprise, right? You probably go to bed at night sleeping and then as soon as you hear that word, boom. Yes, we've come full circle from when we first spoke of professionalism at the white coat ceremony. You just knew I had to raise the issue one more time. What you choose to profess and how you exercise all of the privileges that will be bestowed upon you in the coming days is for you to decide. Pharmacist, and Bill Wimmer so eloquently addressed this. The word pharmacist connotes much in today's society, 
responsibility, respect, integrity, trust, and healing are a few of the things that quickly come to my mind. Henceforth, you will be called a pharmacist for several important reasons. First, you have earned the distinction that the title carries through years of study and hard work. But bear in mind, and this was pointed out by our earlier speakers, that this is just a beginning point, not an end point. And I believe that as a part of the president's charge, he so much said so. You'll always be required to continue to learn and hone your skills for a true healthcare provider's time as a student never ends. Second, you're about to enter into a very special covenant with the public. That covenant will willingly place lives in your hands, and in return, you'll be obligated to draw upon all of your special knowledge and skills. The health and safety of those for whom you have been entrusted to serve demands such. In that regard, I draw upon the words of Michelangelo, who once said, the greatest danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. I urge you to always aim high, keep moving that goalpost, keep raising that bar. Those we serve always deserve our very, very best. And third, you become a member of a very select community. This community called the profession of pharmacy is one built upon trust, discipline, communication, collaboration, caring, and a firm commitment to health promotion and disease prevention. Our profession demands these things, and our patients have come to expect nothing less. For these reasons, and so many more, you'll have the unique privilege of forever bearing the title pharmacist. I feel especially proud and privileged to be among the first to call you a pharmacist because I know in my heart that each of you is so deserving of this recognition. Once again, class of 2018, congratulations. And before I conclude this 132nd commencement, I want to once again thank all of the family members, loved ones, friends who are here today. And I want to share with you that I, I've seen a few of you pick up your children and move. You don't need to do that. I should have said that at the outset. That's, that, that's the most beautiful sound is the sound of a baby. And I look at it in two ways. One is a father and grandfather, but two, those are my future students. So we have applications out back if you want to get a head start on their, their time in pharmacy here. But thank all of you for joining in on today's celebration because without your presence, it wouldn't be a celebration. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 132nd commencement of the University of Iowa College of Pharmacy. I ask please that all attendees please remain seated during the recessional. Once all of the graduates have exited, then you may depart at your convenience. Once again, congratulations, and go Hawkeyes.